Good evening, everyone. We're a little bit late getting on here. Had some technical difficulties, which is kind of common in the high-tech world we live in today. You know the stuff they're wanting to run the whole world by, our cars, <laughs> wanting to run everything by, and yet we constantly have glitches and, and, and uh, uh, diseases and whatever they call it. Viruses, yeah. Yeah, they have, have constantly changing and having to reboot them. I guess it's kind of like humanity. Every once in a while, we have to, we have to reboot somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a little different. Sometimes we have to boot them and see yeah. the pants, you know. Yeah. So I guess we have to reboot these, uh, these computers. But uh, good to have you with us tonight. We, have, we are blessed to have David and Paula Tressler with us tonight. Yes. And uh, I've known them for, for a little while. Sister Pam has known uh, Paula for years and uh we're going to hear some good breakthrough stories tonight we've been we we've been kind of concentrating on on uh you know breakthrough and uh i know this i know this couple have had some major breakthroughs and we were just sitting talking about their families even their families their children and it's just amazing to me you, you don't hear that very often mm -hmm. you know sometimes you hear you know somebody parents got right with god got you know, dried out, whatever it is, and got delivered. But then it takes forever, seems like, to get the rest of the family in. And, and you've not experienced that. No. And, and we're going we're gonna to find out why tonight. Yeah. Well, I can contribute that, to. I had a praying mother. I had an intercessor for a mother. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Makes all the difference. It does. And now you are one. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's... Have Sister Pam open us up in the word okay. and well, prayer. Okay, well, let's pray real quick. Mm. Father, we thank you. We are so grateful for the way that you, you rescue so many of us, Lord. I thank you that we all have a testimony, and I, I am so grateful for the testimony of this couple right here. I ask, Lord, that tonight as they share their testimony that this is part of their overcoming story because your word says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto the death. And I thank you, Father, for the blood that has been applied, yes, for the testimony that they speak, thank and you, Lord, Father. that they are sold out to you. Thank you, Father, that they do not fear what comes before, what's, what's to come, because they're just trusting you. And so, Lord, I ask that tonight as we, as we talk about this that you would just get all of the glory because we know that you've done it all it's in jesus name i pray so yeah. the the verse that i picked out here was second corinthians five seventeen, and i thought that if there's ever any people that this applies to it's it's the two of you it's um therefore if any person is in christ he is a new creature or a new creation the old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away, and behold, the fresh and new has come. Amen. You two are truly, you're, you're new creations. Yes. I mean, you are not like you used to be. Yes. But, uh, yeah, we want to hear your story. And uh, you want to start, David? Sure. Um, well, my story starts, my, uh, I guess, my religious background would be uh, being raised Jehovah Witness. Um, at the age of 14, I began uh, drinking and marijuana, that sort of thing. By the age of 16, I was doing heavy drugs, and that was a lifestyle that continued for till, the, till I turned 40 years old. And so everything that come along with that... Um, the, that lifestyle of in and out of jail, uh, prison, um, the whole letting my family down and the disappointments they experienced, the um, not being a dad that uh, I was supposed to be, letting my children down. And um, there was a lot of stuff that come along with that lifestyle. There was a lot of stuff. You know, there's one thing of living that life and getting free of the addiction, but the underlying issue that caused that addiction was the major part, you know, the major thing we had to get free from. Um, there was a lot of things that comes along with the drug addiction, you know, the perversion and 
and all the this, the whole spiritual side of that that was the real the real thing that we had to break through and get free from. We call it being being restored or or things, but that's really a, a misstatement because a lot of people don't have anything to be restored to. Right. Yeah. They didn't have a beginning in the first place. And so it's a transformation. It's not, not being restored to something, being been transformation. And that's what a lot of people don't realize with, uh, when, when you spend a long time in uh, addiction, it's not just getting clean. It's, it's relearning a, a lifestyle. Yeah. You have a whole lifestyle. You have a whole uh, habits. You're, your, your, your body is programmed, your soul's programmed, everything is just programmed to this one lifestyle. And then you uh, come to God and give your life to him, become a new, new creature, creation in your spirit, man. But then there's this tug of war because your flesh and your soul has to be trained. It's, yes. it's not really transformed, it's trained. <laughs> and that's the part that a lot of people don't, uh, won't go through with. Yeah, I always said I spent, you know, 25 years existing. I didn't know how to live. Right. And so, you know, I've been sober for 10 years. And so over the course of the last 10 years, I learned how to live. Yeah. And be a member of society. Yeah. 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 And you're doing, you're doing a good job at that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good job. Got, got, a, got a really good business, yeah. uh, successful business. And... Uh, Going fishing and hunting all day. <laughs> we just, we just talked about yeah. that. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but uh, you, you're actually uh, life is is actually something that you want to be a part of now. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was homeless, living in the front of my truck. I had nothing, and the Lord took me from that and just transformed my whole life and turned me into a businessman. I never thought in my life I could be could successfully run a business. I never seen that in me. Right. Yeah, it's it's amazing how God brings out the qualities that have been hidden and buried inside of yes. us. And all of a sudden, those qualities start coming out. And so now you have a, a good business. Obviously, you don't uh, you don't just uh, understand the business. You 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 have honor, and and I know that God has placed favor on you. I mean. You can't you can't exp- excel like you have yeah. without God putting favor uh, on you, and and so it, you see the you see the uh, the uh, example and and the uh, what's the word I'm trying to find uh, you you see it played out. You see the the uh, Christianity, the power of God displayed in your life, and now He's producing through you. You're not just you're not just saved and trying to get to heaven. Yeah. Now he's producing through you not only in your business, but he's producing through you as as you're involved in ministry, and uh, and you participate in in a lot of stuff. I know I know you're uh, involved in a lot around here, uh, with uh, Glory Barn, our church, uh, Clay Nash. Yeah. Uh, you know you guys. I, I don't. I'm not sure that there's anything you're not really involved in. <laughs> but but uh, we're thankful for that uh-huh. and thankful to God for the change that has taken place in your life. And uh, you, you are a gift that, that was unwrapped. Yes. Amen. And God finally unwrapped you. Amen. <laughs> That's one of the things, you know, the lifestyle we come from. Me personally, I was, I was always all or none. Yeah. I mean, I'm not one foot in, one foot out. I'm either all in or all out. Yeah. Well, you was a, a really good drunk and drug addict. Uh, now you're exactly. going to be a really good child of God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, there's an old song that, that, uh, uh, about a guy that got, I wish I could remember that, that the name of, of the song is about, but it, it said, talks about this guy that got saved, and, and it says uh, the devil uh, uh, lost a good right hand and heaven gained a soul. <laughs> yes. And uh, talking about just the transformation of, of how that takes place. Tell us how that happened. How, how did you uh, make that transition? You know, I had been in and, in and out of jail a lot. I had my, my uh, experiences with the Lord. You know, uh, you hear a lot about jailhouse conversions and things. And I had a real experience with the Lord in jail. 
you know, um, all by myself. Um, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I was all by myself in a cell, and I, you know, I had a real experience with the Lord. But once I got out, and I didn't change, you know, uh, my association, and went right back to the old people that I used to run around with. It wasn't long till I was right back into that lifestyle, right. and. Uh, I got to a point where I was, like I said, I was homeless and just, I had nothing left. And I was sitting out on the 4th of July, sitting out in the middle of this field in the front of my truck. I had just done the last little bit of drugs I had. I had a bottle of liquor with me and I was sitting there watching fireworks off in the distance. And I just had this thought of, I said to myself, what am I doing? Mm. I said, this is stupid, and it was just, I had that aha moment and started my truck up and drove to my mom and dad's house and never looked back. Wow. <laughs> right in, in the town that I spent, you know, 25 years running wide open in, I, they had a shed in their backyard, and I turned it into a bedroom, and that's where I stayed. Wow. Uh, shortly after that, I got involved with the church there down in Bearville, and that's, you know, that's... Uh, how I got sober. Mm. Wow. Just all of a sudden, you just had this. Yeah. Holy this, Spirit. Yeah. yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> this, it was that, that uh, this is stupid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and, you know, and my parents had heard a lot of, I'm done, and this is over. And I came in, and I said, I'm done. Mm. I handed them my paraphernalia, all my stuff, and I said, get rid of this. I'm done. And that's when they knew this is this is real. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So were your parents serving the Lord at that time or Yes. Uh you know, I had a praying mother for sure. Uh praying grandmother and yes. So now you were telling us the story about, you know, getting caught at the state fair and what happened and uh, can you tell Tell that story again. So at uh, age of 14, I was at the, the county fair, and, uh, you know, we were involved with Jehovah's Witnesses. And one of the elders of the church caught me at the county fair, and I was smoking cigarettes and drinking, and he was like, you, you cannot do this. I'm taking you home. And uh, I told him I wasn't going home. Well, because of that, I broke the rules of that religion, and they called what the uh, they said they, uh, what they called disfellowshipping. So they kicked me out of the church and banned me from all that. And because of that, uh, my parents being baptized into that religion, they told them that, you know, you can't have any association with them. Even though I lived in their home and I was their child, they tried to tell them they couldn't associate with me anymore. So uh, that, at that point, my dad was like, no, that's not what we're doing. And uh, that drew my whole family out of that religion. Okay. So I like guess I said the, earlier, that was yeah. a, almost a blessing in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just uh, yeah. totally changed everything. Yeah. wasn't good to what, what you was doing, but, but uh, the journey ended, ended up uh, going really well. And uh, so uh, I... I was trying to think how long ago it was I met you. I met you at Restoration Connection. Yes. Down at, uh, at the sanctuary. Now, f never forget that. You guys always sit right on the front row and always had people with you that you'd brought. And, and uh, I really was impressed with that. And uh, you, of course, working with uh, Benign Natalie. You know, it's amazing what God, God can do. You know, you, you spent 25 years just fumbling through life and didn't know that there was a successful businessman locked up inside there. Yeah. And now that's come out. You know, uh, Benaiah, when, when he finally got his life straightened out, uh, he'd, he'd, been on, he'd taken so much meth that he didn't believe that he could ever, he, he thought he had he'd really messed up his mind, not be able to do anything. And, but God has so healed him and restored him that now he's, he's uh, in his master's program in college and he's carried uh, right at a 4.0 average all the way through college. 
and he's getting 100% on, on things that the, that the uh, professors never give 100% on. And, and so that's, that's the transformation God can do when we turn our lives over to him. Wow. He, he, he can heal us. He can restore us. He, he brings out the qualities that he put inside of us. And next thing you know, you're, you're producing instead of, instead of consuming. Yes. And now you're, you're a producer in this, in this world. And uh, we are extremely thankful that that, that happened. And God changed yes. you and uh, set you on a, on a new path. And just that encounter, that, that, that shows that it doesn't take anything real dramatic. Just all of a sudden, Holy Spirit helped you just to flip that switch yeah. and say, this is it. And, you know, God can take and so far remove you from that that there is even memories are gone from that lifestyle. It's like it was just a bad dream I had one night. Wow. And just all, a lot of the memories are gone from the whole lifestyle. Good. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> Praise I tell, the Lord. I tell people all the time that their, their worst enemies uh, is... is uh, Allowing, them, allowing disappointment to take over your life mm-hmm. and familiarity. Yeah. And those two things can crash you faster than anything that there is. And you got to, you know, learning to forgive yourself, that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Once I got to the point where I, especially with uh, my children, you know, being able to forgive myself for what I'd done. Yeah. That was a big hurdle. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, because you want to... After you, after you finally get things straightened out, you, you almost have this thing where you, where you feel like you need to be punished. Yeah. You know, you need to punish yourself. I don't deserve any better, you know. Yeah. And all that does is, is create more yes. mistakes and more problems. Yeah. So, Sister Paula. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You are uh, very involved mm-hmm. in uh, all things Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we 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 just uh, we just love you guys. You're just uh, we're we're so thankful that uh, that you're a part. We're thankful that what God's doing through you. I knew you as as a director down at uh, uh, Simmery Town. Yep, yep. And uh, you every time I went to Rest- Restoration Connection, you'd have a whole group up there, uh-huh. which was great because I love the first timers. Right. You know? uh-huh. every, it seemed like I could always tell when. If somebody's been there the first time, because I'd always, I'd always get, I'd pick on them, you know, just uh-huh. always isolate them out and and talk to them. So uh, and you always, you always, you always had me plenty of candidates. Yes, <laughs> it was it was always a good time on Wednesday yes. night. Pastor Tim was there. I knew you was going to pick on them, and it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Susan would say, "Oh, you're not going to make me cry tonight." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, remember, I remember that. That one. Yeah. I started talking to that one lady, and she, she said, "I'm not going to cry. Not tonight. I'm I, not. You're not going to make I me said, cry tonight." Yeah. I said, "I don't want you to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to get right with God. Uh-huh. I want to know that you're right with God. Right. By the time it's over, she was she was bawling, <laughs> crying. But, but uh, thank God for that. And a lot of a lot of lives touched through that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, now you work with uh, Jana Lee and Healing Ministries, and yeah. Um, and yep. tell me what all you're doing. Well, I um, do, well, I work with Jenna Lee at the healing rooms. Um, mostly right now, the Lord has me just being the best wife, mom, and grandma I can be. And um, being at every, um, you know, i got to take time for my personal time with the Lord. But I go to, mo- I go to most all of the early morning prayer gatherings. And Good. so, yeah, and, um, yeah. But yeah. mostly my focus right now is, um, of course, David. And then we have a daughter that's still at home. She's 17. She's a senior. And then I have three lovely granddaughters that live here in Branson. And then we have three that live in Berryville. But the three that are here in Branson, I'm available whenever their parents need their grandma to step in. I'm there. So, awesome. yeah, that's quite an yeah. honor. So yeah. you're getting to play that role. Yes. Yeah, that's, yes. that's awesome. That's great. And um, so the, uh, I know you're involved in, in a lot of, you've been participating in this uh, two weeks of contending for America and, and uh, man, we need yeah. to contend for America. Yes, there's, a, yes, we do. there's a lot of people out there uh, that's just like you guys, but now it's, it's even worse. It's a, it's a confusion that, that 
you know, a lot of, for years, people that wasn't living for God, they still knew there, there was right, right and there was wrong. But we're dealing with generations now that, that don't understand that. They don't, they don't know right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we've got a huge challenge uh, ahead of us as far as uh, we, we see it, but also look at it and, and think, man, just one encounter with Holy Spirit but and all God. that stuff's going to be gone, you know. Yeah. They, they find out real fast that it's, there's a right way. Yeah. Now, we were, just, uh, we were just talking. Well, tell us how, how things <coughs> well, um, got changed with you. So um, in 2004, I got, I got mad at God, and I got mad at my ex-husband, and I started smoking pot, and I walked out into addiction. And um, shortly after starting smoking pot, it turned into a full-blown methamphetamines addiction and a divorce, and I, you know, um, ripped my family apart, and um, I battled. I was in real heavy addiction for about three years, and then I was in trouble, and so I was kind of in and out. But then in 20, in 2013, um, I went into another full-blown methamphetamine addiction that lasted about three years, and, and then I ended up in county jail. In March of 2016, I ended up in county jail, and um, it just happened that I had... So during a time that I was sober, um, I was going to church at Lakewood Church in Branson West, and that's where I actually met General Lee, and that was back in like 2000, and, around 2010. And um, but on uh, just so happened to be that General Lee was a jail chaplain in Stanley County Jail when I ended up there, so that was pretty cool. But it actually wasn't General Lee; it was actually a ministry called Freedom Seekers that came in on Wednesday mornings. And actually, David was involved in Freedom Seekers. Actually, David's home church was the Harvest in Oak Grove Assembly of God, and um, yeah, uh, the Harvest in Oak Grove. And uh, that's where this ministry was based out of it with Ron Hutchins. Well, this little lady came in there, and her name was Jerry Sue Carpenter, and she gave her testimony to us girls in county jail. And actually, Brittany Amos was in jail. We were in jail together. And... Um, Jerry Sue was like around 70, and she was raising her three-year-old granddaughter um, because her daughter was um, practicing an alcoholic. And uh, so I got, you know, it was just like it was a complete God set up. It's like her sharing her testimony, and here my 70-year-old mother was living in Kirbyville raising my little girl that had suffered a stroke and was on oxygen, and, you know, it was just like, that just, it just hit me, and uh, the Lord just used that testimony. That was my complete surrender that morning um, in county jail. I just said, you know, Lord, I just surrender. I just, I never want to be back in this place of guilt, shame, or remorse again. I, you know, I was like, Lord, I don't care what it takes. I don't care if I have to spend the rest of my life in a church service or a prayer meeting or in an AA meeting or if I have to work in recovery, whatever it takes. I just, Lord, uh, it's my complete surrender. I don't ever want to be in this place again. You know, of course, county jail is not great, but that's not what I was talking about. It's the spiritual place again. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you what, Holy Spirit came into that county jail that morning and <clears throat> there was about 16 girls in there. <clears throat> And uh, Holy Spirit came in, and there was not a dry eye in the building. Um, every girl in there just melted under the presence of the Lord. And we straight had a revival in Taney County Jail, and it lasted for months. Um, me and Brittany, you know, me and Brittany, we, we, Brittany had been with the Lord and fallen out and come back to the Lord. And so she was already filled with the Holy Spirit. Me and Brittany, we prayed in tongues the whole time in there. We would read the Bible and we'd do devotions. And there was another little girl. Two of the other little girls came to church. We all ended up here together at a church service here in the last year. But Amy and Amy and Brittany, and I'm telling you why, we, people were getting slain in the Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> healed, saved, all kinds of stuff, right in <laughs> county jail. We was having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I told people that outside of Canaan County Jail that I was, you know, taking care of me while I was in jail. I said, man, 
I said, if, if God stays in this jail like this, I don't ever have to leave here. I mean, it was <laughs> glorious. <laughs> so that was our Taney County revival. And, you know, uh, that, it, that was just my surrender. I mean, that was my complete and total surrender. And I'm telling you what, God has just taken care of me, and he has moved mightily. Like I was sharing before, you know, I had... Um, my oldest daughter, she had already had um, two children, so I was already a grandma to two children, and unfortunately, fortunately, they were young enough that they had never seen, the, or, that they don't remember, but they, I, their grandma had been around them high on drugs, but fortunately enough, they don't remember, thank God, that they don't ever remember their grandma high, but... Um, so my oldest daughter had already given birth to two of my grandchildren, and her, she was sober and, and serving the Lord, and um, she, as soon as she got pregnant, she got her life together. But um, the guy she was with, um, they had been together since they were 15, and um, they got married, but he didn't really quite get it together. So he was So he was in and out of jail and addiction, and I was in and out of jail and addiction, and my middle daughter, of course, followed me right into addiction, but, but God. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's a God of the suddenlies. You know, I did have a praying mama, and I know that she prayed us all through to this point, but once I got sober, then my middle daughter followed through and got sober, and then... Um, it wasn't too long my son-in-law got sober and he went, my oldest son-in-law went through Brother Danny's program and then my middle son-in-law went through Brother Danny's program. We got lots of love and lots of honor for Brother Danny and the mentor he's been to our adult children. So we're, we're very grateful for Brother Danny and Sister Christy. So I got out of jail. They didn't want to let me out of jail. I was in a lot of trouble, and um, I was a menace to society. But God, God said, uh, you don't have to go to prison because they were wanting to send me to the Department of Corrections for eight years. But I did not, by the grace of God, serve one day in prison. Um, that's a whole, a whole testimony all in of its own, how God just worked all of that out. And I ended up um, getting to do Taney County Drug Court and, you know, God just kept moving, and the girls that uh, were all in jail, I got out, and we all got to do a Bible study together, and generally got to keep mentoring all of us, and um, it's just been wow. glorious. Yeah, I did um, Taney County Drug Court. I was never got in any trouble. I walked right down through that, and, um, the, you know, the Lord just kept using me to minister to girls and so uh, actually working at Simmering Center was something that was on my heart I wanted to do while I was in jail but it had closed down as a treatment center but then it was reopened as a sober living facility and then actually um, God did that for me I, I didn't go looking for that job they called me and offered me wow. the job so that was a blessing and the the latest thing that's happened that's a complete blessing i've been trying to get back in jail since i got out <laughs> i uh, <laughs> i just got to start going into stone county jail and doing ministry so awesome. about uh, awesome. six yeah. weeks ago so that's pretty awesome and exciting so yeah so about uh 18 about a year and a half into it um i was working at i'm just gonna give you all the story i was working at um <laughs> Uh, for Brands, I was doing OPC for Summer Winds Resorts, and I was working at the booth in uh, Golden Corral. And this guy comes in there, and he's like, him and the guy come in at eight, and they walked out, and he get back around, and he looked, and he says, "I know you," and I'm like, "And Lord, oh God, where do you know me from?" You know, because <laughs> of the lifestyle we had lived. Yeah. But um, he's like, "We're Facebook friends," and I was like, oh, "Okay." And uh, I looked him up when he left. So he was friends with all my spiritual mentors from Harvest Assembly in Oak Grove, Arkansas. So anyway, he he was part of the ministry that um, got uh, that the Lord had used to lead me back to him. So that was pretty cool. So that's how we met. We started dating on. He'd come up and we go to church on Friday night. So that's how we dated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's a good. Way awesome. to date. Yeah. yeah, and it, well, actually, when we started dating, it was pretty cool. He lived in a shed at his parents' house, and I had just moved, at, left a, a sober living facility myself and was living at my mom's, and I just had barely gotten a car, and he didn't even have a truck that was good enough that he could drive up here to date me. He had to borrow his boss's truck to come up here to go on a date. <laughs> and, you know, we just look at each other all the time when we think, 
look where God has brought us. We just had to pinch ourselves yeah. sometimes because yeah. we have the best life. We yeah. have we are blessed beyond measure. You know, we we have several good automobiles. We have everything financially we could ever imagine. And but that doesn't matter. We have we are feel so um, loved and accepted and. Uh, part of a body. Uh, we love you and Sister Betty and, and um, Pastor Rusty and Belinda and Chuck and Terry. We have never felt so um, part of something that is so wonderful. Um, we appreciate it so much. But And our kids are great. And I have to bar brag on my husband. He <laughs> might have not been a good dad for a while, but he is the best dad. He is so good. Not, you know, he has just taken my girls, and he is so good to my girls, and his girl, and our our son-in-laws. They, we have the best man ever, and I'm so thankful yeah. for him. He is so good to us all. Yeah. So, Look yes. what the Lord has done. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Those are that. That's a nutshell version of some tremendous things that happen. Yeah. See, we we just went through a short story, you know. Y'all just and and yet what you were just describing was supernatural miracles, one after another. Because yeah. we take this, we take it for granted, mm -hmm. and yet we don't realize that this is actually divine intervention and supernatural happenings that take place in the natural, and and we just. We just told a, uh, you guys just told some little stories there, and and yet there was there was thousands of angels involved in that. Yes. Oh, yes. Holy yes. Spirit, yes. there was coordination <laughs> took place. God, God was constantly coordinating yes. things, you know, and uh, even even to you being out in that field watching those fireworks, God had you right where He wanted you, yes. and then just smacked you right in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, <clears throat> talking about whenever, right, uh, whenever we met. Right before uh, I met her, I kept, I told my buddy, I was like, man, there's just something in Branson that keeps drawing me. And I just kept feeling this pull to Branson. So I would come up here every weekend and just Did hang it out. Blonde? Did it have blonde hair? <laughs> and then <laughs> she left out the part where she had these flashy red fingernails, and it was just like a fishing lure that hooked me right in the lip. <laughs> but, no, and, but now that I see the, you know, the family that we're involved with here, the body, and, you know, the life that we have, I see, you know, now you can look back and see what God was doing. Right. Yeah. He's drawn yeah. you up here for, for a lot of reasons. Yes. So how long have you guys been married? Uh, coming up six years next yeah. month. Yeah. Six years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And uh, just a, a life of wreck and ruin, <laughs> both of yeah. you. And then uh, all of a sudden you, you get with the master builder yes. Yes. that has the blueprints and he starts putting things together for you, starts building your, your life and now now you're you know, nobody could ever tell that, that you guys ever had any problems. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Right. It, it's like it's like you've always been this way. You know? And so we're we're thankful for that. And thankful for what God's uh, doing in your life and what God's got for you. And, and just look into how many more David and Paula's are out there yes. that we're going to yeah. get to meet this year. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. You know, we got a lot of friends we need to meet Amen. that we, we, do. don't even, we don't even know them right now. <laughs> but they need to have a Taney County revival. They you do. know, yep. they need to have an encounter in, in, a, in a field all by themselves. Yes. Where, and and all that happened because somebody was calling on the name of the Lord, and and asking God to to redeem you guys, and uh, and then cord God was coordinating things and sit you you were getting set up from one one yep. step to another you know <laughs> <laughs> even even them red fingernails. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it golden corral. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he says it's the red was the red finger. I don't believe that. I think it was the Holy Spirit because I had this <laughs> book. It was I can't remember the author, but it was the 
it was about the Azusa Street Revival, and so it was like February, yeah. and there's no tourists in town, so I brought my book to read while I was in my booth that day, and I had read the whole book, and it was talking about the Shekinah glory in the cloud, and I was so caught up in all that. I think it was the Holy Spirit. I don't think it was the red fingernails. Uh, that's just one of the jokes. <laughs> Don't sell the shallowness of manhood short. Okay, I, I won't. I won't. I won't. <laughs> God, God knows what gets our attention. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a red fingernail. Yeah, the red fingernail, blonde hair. Yeah. 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 And then, oh, look at what she's <laughs> reading. Ah, jackpot. Yeah. He looked. He looked at you, and he heard angels singing. I mean, just... I think we had a three-day conversation about the. Revival. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Zeus Street Revival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. the story, so you, the children's story oh, the, of yeah. the revival. Yeah. yeah, I've read that book too. Yeah. Yeah. So your dating was going to church. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We would go to church, go have dinner, and I'd go back to Merville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Burville. 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 <laughs> it's actually Berryville, but... You know. Yeah, I, I was concerned there. You, you're, you're trying to you're trying to cross over. Right. <laughs> I, I was almost here in Berryville. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> Only people from Burville know what I'm saying. Bur yeah. <laughs> you know. Down down yeah. on Burville. Burville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I've always called it, Burville. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm glad God got a hold of you. I've got friends yes. down in that area, and pastor friends and. And the church you was going to, Harvest Assembly, uh, for years I've known good things about about that church, and and uh, I'm just so glad that that things are happening in this area like they are because there's life. Right. We we have had a battle trying to break through, and and get anything uh, really moving here, and um, in the last few years uh, that's been happening, and you guys are the product of that. You know, it's it's been several years since we've we've really seen good stories like this, and and people getting set free, and and uh, you know, Taney County revival. Who who would have guessed it? Right. You know, I've I've told different people. They said I, you know, might sound mean, but they they say, oh, I, d I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. And I, and I I look at them and say, well, that might be the best thing ever yeah. happened to you. You know, yep. uh, that might be where where you really get straightened out. Talking to a young man uh, the other day that he was go down the restoration connection still still does and uh he he ended up having to go to prison he god got a hold of him straightened his life out uh you guys know him he, he's a cook and, and uh can't remember his name right now but uh, god really got a hold of him i mean just touched him and and then he found that had to go to had to go to court and we were all up there with him and he got sent sentenced to federal prison and God so changed him, turned him around, and got him involved in ministry in that prison that he was at the prayer meeting the other day and talking about it. And he said, he said, he said, can you believe it? I miss being in prison hmm. because of what God was doing. He said, every day of my life, I was experiencing a move of God, you know. And then he gets out and, and just, uh, you know, I told him the other night, I said, don't let the mundane of life outside here rob you right. and take that from you stay involved stay connected stay hooked up don't don't let it don't let it uh distract you uh because we can get we can get so busy living our blessed life that that, that we end up uh taking god for granted taking this and and losing out with it you know the enemy is a is a deceiver he's always trying to figure out how to how to uh, trip us up how to get us to give up what god you know the 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 absolute fact is the devil can't take anything from you. But he can talk you into giving yes. it up. And that's the scary part. He can get us to do his work for him. Matter of fact, in, I turned to this a while ago in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 38. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed uh, by the devil, for God was with him. Jesus has, he paid the price 
to deliver us, to heal us that are oppressed uh, by, the, by the devil. And, and so he gives us this life. He gives us this ability. He gives us these blessings. And, but if we're not careful, we, we lose track. And we start just enjoying life. And next thing you know, God's not as important as he used to be. Right. And uh, it's always important to stay uh, involved, to stay hooked up, to not lose the fire and the passion. Uh, you know, you've got to you've got to hang on to that. You got to hang on to that fire and passion that God. Uh, if you were born in the fire and you need to live in the fire, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, if, if once once you experience something like that, you can't you can't uh, be a part of anything else. It's just too small. You know, I, I I did a little short stint in prison, and it was one of the a very big turning point in my life, and. You know, I was sitting in prison, and I, I only ended up doing a year in in, the, in prison. But at, when I got there, I was looking at 30 years. And the Lord, you know, I was really, I was in the Word. I was, I was, I spent every day in the chapel library. You know, I said, Lord, if I'm going to do 30 years in prison, I'm starting my prison ministry right now. And I was mm -hmm. fully engaged. Yeah. And when I got out, I left all that behind. I left it at the gate and went mm -hmm. right back and, you know, I ended up strung out on drugs again and homeless. Wow. Yeah. You just, you just said what I, you know, yeah, exactly. confirmed what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If we're not careful, we let the, the pressures and the distractions and all that, it just steals, steals from us. Yeah. I get out there and say, oh, you know, I've got it now. Thanks, Lord. I've got it now. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> it, 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 yeah. Isn't that the, uh, the worst deception yes. that there is. Yes. You know, God, I couldn't change my life. You changed it, but but now that you changed my life. I've, I I can handle this. Yeah. And next thing you know, we're we're face we're face planting somewhere. Yes. And uh, God's God's got to. But don't, aren't you glad he's he's uh, patient? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And he doesn't give up. Yes. That's the thing that just really amazes me. He doesn't give up. You know, even yeah. Judas. Jesus didn't give up on him. Even in the garden when Judas betrayed him, he said, really, you, you're going to betray me with a kiss? You know, he still cared about him. He still wanted him. But, but Judas, living with the Son of God, I mean with him, working with him, walking with him, seeing the miracles, participating in the life that Jesus was producing. And yet, at the Last Supper, he had already made an agreement with the high priest and that greed was, was just more powerful to him. And, uh, and it says that right there in the presence of the Lord, it says, and, and Satan entered him. Hmm. He had everything offered to him. I mean, the Son of God, the very power of God was standing right there in the room. And he chose the devil right there and that happens so often in our lives and then in we see that happen over and over and over and yet Jesus was still wanting Judas to turn around because just the way he said that really you you're gonna betray me with a kiss you know and uh, you could feel just the, the just the ache in his heart over that situation and then the way he restored Peter, you know, he took him right back to uh, everything that had went on in his life, you know, uh, to the the fishing, which uh, no, you can go fishing. To the <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the, the fishing, and 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 then he built a fire. Well, it was while Peter was warming himself at a fire is where he denied the Lord three times and. You know, he brought him back to every part of that and walked him through it and asked him three times. He, he walked him back through all of his disappointments and all of his failures, and he restored Peter. And that's what God is doing, and he is, he's a good God. He's patient. He's loving. And uh, I'm excited uh, to see what God's going to do through you guys in the days ahead. And thank God you're getting to be mom and grandma now. Uh, I'm I'm so happy about that, Thank you. and uh, because 
that those those kids and grandkids are going to need that. They're going to need you. They need you today. Yeah. They need they need dad and grandpa and and uh, you guys. The the favor that has been on your life to see your families even restored yes. is uh, it that just shows the power of God because that that's not a that's not a common story. No. Uh, there, there's there's so much has to be overcome in situations like that. And yet for God to restore your lives gives me so much hope because I'm, I'm, I'm saying, okay, God, you know, if you can do that in David and Paula's life, let's, let's head right into a revival of, of families being restored yes. and you know, whole generations being, being brought in uh, because that's yes. what we need. We've got to have that. And, and so the breakthroughs come from God. We can't right. produce them. All we can do is spend time in prayer and in seeking God and prepare ourselves to be his vessels and to receive from him. But God does the work. And, uh, yes. and we're, gonna, we're seeing that now. And we're going to see a whole bunch more of it. I'm, I am anticipating. Um, you know, my prayer lately for the last few years has been, has been God bring us to a point where our altars are never empty. And our baptistries are never dry. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm looking for just a mass evangelism, where people are born again, and God help us to build the structure. Yes. You know, yes. we need we need prayer meetings for these people to be a part of ever during the week. We need we need uh, discipleship. Yes. We we need healing. We need healing uh, ministries that can bring them through healing and and restoration and. You know, I was preaching Sunday that, that Jesus called uh, Lazarus out of the grave, out of the tomb. He brought him back to life and told him to come out. But then he told the people, stand, they, he told them to unwrap him, take the grave clothes off of him. And that's, our, that's what we've got to be ready to do. We've got to be ready to take the grave clothes off of people that God's called out. And, and so as the Lord builds... builds uh, the structure and the ministries here and helps us. I, I'm, I'm just believing that there is a plethora of, of uh, David and Paula's out there yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and kids and grandkids and that, uh, that are going to start streaming in, into the, into the body of Christ. You know, we see that in Brittany's life. You guys had the tiny, County revival. Yes, we yes. see that in Brittany's life, and we see her family coming yes. in, and yes. and uh, exes, and yes. I mean, it's just <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. You see God that. healing <laughs> stuff that just that's just amazing. Yes, it is. You know, <laughs> I, yes. sometimes I get amazed. I say, and who are you? Well, well, well that, that that's my ex-husband, and and he got saved, and then this, this is our kids from this marriage, and uh-huh. and and. You know, all of a sudden, God's bringing all this this chaos uh-huh. and making a beautiful uh, yes. life out of it. Yes. You know, He's painting these beautiful portraits yeah. out of out of junk, out of chaos. And yeah. so, you guys, you know, you was talking earlier. You you've known each other for quite a while. Went to Faith Life together when you. Um, Branson Christian, Branson Fellowship. Christian Fellowship. Yeah, we were. Oh, Branson, Branson Christian yeah, Fellowship. Yeah, we were Branson Christian Fellowship for. Um, yeah. That was back in 96, 97, 98. Is that where you? Okay. Back, I, yeah. back in old 98. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, sounds, a, that sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah that see. would be right around that time. Uh-huh. And yeah. yeah, I knew her, her mom and her, uh, my sister. your sister. And I think my, my brother Jay came in too. Didn't he? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. So, yeah, and I knew her mama, and her mama was a, she was a praying woman. Yeah, yeah. my mother was definitely an intercessor. And so that was like, uh, I would want to give hope to anybody that has children and addiction that don't give up because the Lord will do it. He did it for my mom, and it was a suddenly, and when it was done, it was done. And um, I'm glad that she, she, we lost her in 2020, but I'm glad that she got to see that I was good and I was okay and uh, my kids were okay. And yeah. so, yeah. 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 And then she got to go home to heaven. So. Well, there is a, there is a lot of spoils out there. 
you know, I've, I've been talking about this for quite a while that yeah. we, we see people uh, saved and, and we're so thankful for that. You know, when, when you, God changed your life and you're born again, we're just so thankful for that. But that was a war. That was a battle that God won and gave you victory. Yeah. And the Lord's been impressing on me that, that we're, we're thankful for that, but we, we walk off and leave a battlefield covered in spoils. There's a lot of other people connected to that salvation and your salvation. Well, yeah, look and, at what and happened so, in Taney County. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, those were the spoils. So there, there. there's just yeah. this, there's a, these battlefields that uh, we've walked away from and said, thank God we're, we're delivered. But we forget that there's, there's hundreds of, of other people. There's spoils there that we need to learn how to reap. We need to learn how to, how to bring them in and, uh, and get the harvest. Bring, bring the spoils of war into the, into the kingdom of God. And so there's a bunch of them. You guys, yeah. you guys did a real good job making messes out there, so... <laughs> you know, to, um, so it was really cool you know you do get further away from it and like you do have to keep your your um, flame um, right. fanned because you know but when I uh, first got out of jail and I was in drug court and stuff I would go on um, Thursday nights was one of my favorite nights I would go with um, it was Jesus was homeless then and they and do meal delivery um, because you go to all those motels where you see all the people that you used and so I was set free and delivered so I love to go and knock on the door and somebody that I knew from addiction would mm -hmm. open the door and they could see that I was different so that was one of the highlights for me when I first got out but you know I was going to tell you this when I was in jail um, I appreciated Jana Lee so much. She didn't just bring Bibles. That lady, she has given her life to this. She, out of her pocket, takes hundreds of dollars worth of Bibles into Taney County Jail. But she, at that time, she could bring books. And um, so when I was in jail, uh, that was one of the best nine months of my life. Like, it was Ron is his name. So what guy you were talking about yeah, that Ron. wishes. Okay. Um, that was, and there was lots of times after I got out that I missed being in there because it was all, it was full-time ministry in there because people come in there and they're broken and hungry and they want, they want some hope. So it was a great time in there, but um, Jenna Lee would bring books in and the Lord discipled me and he started um, training me in there, but uh, the Lord had shown me about myself. Um, I, through a book by Watchman Nee was that I had had a root of rebellion. So I repented of that root of rebellion and I um, read in the book and found out what it was to not have that root of rebellion. It was submitting to authority. And so that's how the Lord walked me in. Because I had been in jail several times and, and never wanted to go back and never wanted to disappoint. But I just kept going back. And so the that's why I kept going back is I had that root of rebellion and I didn't know it. I was deceived, you know. Um, so when the Lord showed me and he set me free from that and then I seen what it was to not walk in that and to submit to authority, that's how the Lord led me through recovery was making sure that I was submitted to authority. But That's interesting that you may mention yeah. that because uh, actually was, while I was on my way here, my thought was, I wonder what lie you believed mm -hmm. that kept you in addiction and kept you there yeah. and at what point did you find out what the truth was mm -hmm. and I know the book you're talking about yeah. spiritual authority in yeah. fact I'm, I'm going through it <laughs> again for I think about the fifth yeah. time right now and it's like I'm really going through because I'm you know I, I find that sometimes there's rebellion in me too and it's like I've got to get this out yeah, yeah. and and you just find little tenant oh my goodness it it just you know, gets in there and you don't even realize it. But yeah, yeah. so you had that revelation. I did. And when, once you see that, it's like, okay, I, mm -hmm. I am going to submit. Submit, yeah. And, so, and, and yeah. I had lots of people to submit to when I first got out of jail because I had a probation oh. officer and I had yeah. a counselor and, you know, how to judge. So I had lots of people to submit. And Jenna Lee, you know, I was uh -huh. made sure I had a spiritual authority that I submitted to. Yeah, and I didn't... If um, 
I thought I needed to take this, even to the smallest detail. If I thought I needed this job or that job, or I thought it was time for me to leave the sober living and move to my mom's, I didn't do anything unless all these people that were in authority over me were in agreement with that. Wow. Then I would, then I would know it would be okay to make a move because I had purpose in my heart you know nobody wants to disappoint everybody in their life or hurt their kids that's not right. that's not the intentions of your heart so um you know but i was just so deceived i was had deceived myself not right. knowing i had the root of rebellion so to know that um was a good thing so yeah 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 because the, if we don't have that root of rebellion mm -hmm. then but I identified with the enemy, what we had in common with him, mm -hmm. it's taken out. Mm -hmm. And now he has, you have nothing in, common, in common with him. With, yeah. And so now he's, well, now how do I get in? Yeah. And so now the, my latest battle has been, this is, this is cool. You were, you were part of this, um, and a round table. Um, so I had this, walk through this whole thing with nicotine. You know, um, I hadn't been smoking cigarettes, but I'd still been using these nicotine pouches. And so the Lord had showed me in the Word. I, it was, uh, I think it was in Second Peter, but it was talking about how Esau gave up his birthright for a mm -hmm. plate of food for the flesh. And so the Lord didn't really say you're going to give up your birthright, but basically you're going to give up where I want to take you if you keep uh, allowing this work of the flesh, you know, the right. nicotine. And you know, and it, it had been a real battle. But when the Lord showed me in the Word and corrected me. I was okay. I could lay that down, uh -huh. and it wasn't it wasn't hard, because right. I had tried. I had heard you at a round table say mm -hmm. that nicotine or uh, cigarettes mm -hmm. was something, and and the yeah. Lord had showed you that um, he he paid the price for that, and it was just kind of rude of you to not walk in it. So I, yeah. I you know, I tried <laughs> to take that revelation and and lay that nicotine down, yeah. and I really couldn't. And you know, Brittany Amos, she um. It was the song, It's Your Breath in My Lungs. Well, that, she just threw them cigarettes away and she never went back to it. But I couldn't roll on y'all's revelations because I was trying everything. But when the Lord corrected me in the Word and myself, uh -huh. then it was like, oh, okay, they're gone. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's when you yeah. get set free, when yeah. you get that well, truth. What are yeah. you forfeiting? Yeah. 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 Right. Sometimes God asks us to lay stuff down so that we so that he can bring us into a better place nice, yeah. right. and uh, boy sometimes i like to use the illustration about the lady with the bag of rice uh -huh. you know uh that she needed groceries and she called this one ministry that provided groceries but their requirement was that if you needed to take what you had and and donate it and then they'd, they'd give you groceries and it just kind of a deal where teaching you how to be a giver, not just a taker. And so they asked her, said, okay, what, what do you got in your house? She said, all I've got is a bag of rice. And they said, okay, said, uh, we'll, we'll bring that and donate it when you come get your groceries. She said, I can't believe you're asking me to, you're wanting to take my bag of rice. And they said, well, yeah, but we're, we're gonna give you groceries. And she said, she said, well, that, that's unbelievable that you would want it, that you would ask me for my bag of rice. And she got totally offended because they wanted wow. her to donate that bag of rice. And she ended up hanging up on them because they asked her to donate that bag of rice. And yet they were going to give her, you know, a whole carload of groceries. Right. So wow. she couldn't let go of that bag of rice. Mm -hmm. And because of that, she forfeited all this great blessing that she was going to get and that's the way we are a lot of times we we hang on to stuff that we think matters divine forgiveness or something just yeah trivial, yeah know? yeah yep. we hang on to that and it it keeps us from being able to to yeah. for god to bring us into a much bigger place a much greater place you know if you hadn't have been willing to submit to god you wouldn't have the company you've got today and be yeah. be blessed like you are and honor and favor put on you of course you got to be you got to be honorable and honest and a good worker and you got to you got to do the job yeah. you can't go out there and and, and uh, produce garbage and and get expect to be paid for so you've you've done you put in the work you've put in the labor you've done a good job and yet in all the competition God's blessing you yeah. so you see the favor of God 
So you had to you had to let go and yield to God in order for God to, to bring you into that place. And it has been a joy to have you guys with us tonight. It has been. And yeah. uh, have a good conversation about the breakthroughs. And, and uh, man, I, I just want to see a bunch of that. You know, yeah. we're, we're seeing little bits of it, little pockets. But I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to see just an avalanche of, of people, um, you know, getting right with God and, and being changed. I'm not talking about people just coming because they're, they're trying to get clean. Yes. You know, that, that's, that's one thing. I'm talking about people coming and having transformations and encounters with God um, and, and just being, being changed. You know, I, I had a vision one time. I was in here praying, and I saw people with, with uh, uh, rubber gloves on, the, the kind doctors wear, you know, and stuff. And they were praying with people at the altars, but they had these rubber gloves on. I thought, why, why, why did they have rubber gloves on? Why did they have protective stuff on? And, uh, and I got over closer, and there was all these people up here being born again. Just the power of God was on them. And the drugs was literally coming out through the pores of their skin. And the people that was praying with them had to be careful uh, because they were being delivered. They were literally being cleansed. And I thought, is that even possible? <laughs> you know, but that's what God wants to do. He wants, he wants to, to have a, have, he wants to see people so powerfully changed that everything in them comes out of them. And just transformed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to pray for that. Yes. You, you guys in favor of that? Yes. You believe that? Yes. <laughs> Father, we just thank you, yes. God, for uh, uh, David and Paula. Thank you, Lord God, for their testimonies, their lives. Lord, how you, you dug them out of the pit. And now, Lord God, you've, you've placed them on top of the mountain. And we thank you for that. Father, we, we pray today, Lord God, that uh, they would be like a first fruits of, of a yes, major Lord. move of God in this region. Lord, there are so many, so many in this region, Lord God, that are, that are battling addiction and, and destruction. And Lord, they just keep cycling through the, the rehab ministries and cycling through the, the, the court system and the judges. Lord, our, our courts are so overloaded that, that they can't even deal with this stuff, Lord God. Uh, cases are, are uh, being uh, put off sometimes over a year before they can get two years, before they can get to them because there's such a caseload. But Father, I pray, Lord God, that those caseloads uh, diminish yes, because people are being transformed and changed. Yes, and uh, Father, we just ask for that. We pray tonight, Lord God, that, that you would multiply this, Lord God, multiply uh, this deliverance is changing and Lord you didn't just change David and Paula you changed their families their children yes. their grandchildren Lord you have you have literally changed generations through what has taken place in their lives and uh, Father we thank you for that we ask you Lord God to help us to prepare ourselves help, help us to be ready for this yes, God we Lord. need workers yes, we, do. we need people to know how we need the workers and we need the know-how. Yes, and Father, we thank you for that. And I just pray blessing on David and Paula tonight, Father God. I just ask you to continue uh, to bless them, continue to prosper them, continue, Lord God, to, to pull at their hearts and, and cause them to grow. And Father, we give you praise and honor for that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so Amen. Much. Thank you for being with us tonight and uh, participating. Let's pray together, believe together for a great harvest of, of souls like this yes. coming in. Yes. Amen. Amen.